Welcome to episode 161 of The Numbers Game. I'm Jace. I'm here with Nick and Marty. How are we, fellas? Going well, mate. Going well. Pumped up. I'm going to get controversial today. I'll be interested to see what you think about what I'm going to talk about because, um, yeah, it's out there. It's woke. <laughs> I never thought I'd say that, but uh, interesting. Nick, how are you? I'm good. I'm good, mate. But we're we just talking about go, go woke, go broke. <laughs> what, what are you doing? I might, might have to change the uh, topic then. <laughs> Don't like the go broke bit. <laughs> uh, no, going, going well. Looking, uh, looking forward to this one. How are you, Jase? Good, mate. I'm okay. Uh, the countdown is on. There's a few weeks until the London Marathon. Uh, look, it's Ooh. the back end of April, but uh, plenty of K's in the legs. Uh, lots, lots happening. Uh, body is holding up okay. I, I, uh, I feel like I'm coming into my, my element, and my zone. Uh, it's been, been good to get. I mean, look, spending hours pounding the pavement on a weekend is, uh, you know, starting to get a bit inside my own head. I'm glad that I've got you boys in my ear, listen, re-listening to a few old eps of the numbers game. Um, but geez, it can be lonely out there sometimes. But all good. Are you doing full marathon or half marathon? Got the marathon? full full marathon in wow. London, and then I've got the full marathon in Gold Coast, and then I've got the full marathon in Chicago at the end of the year or in October. So it's a, it's the year of marathons. We might need to get Greg back on the show to talk about this. He, he's kind of driving the journey. He'd be approaching, or maybe he's past thirteen hundred days straight running. He, I think he, you guys interviewed him when I was away one yep. time, and. He still has not missed a day of running, um, and he's got himself from a point where 1,300 days ago when he wasn't running, he was, you know, 17 kilos overweight, didn't run, you know, had no desire to run. He's now going for a sub three-hour marathon um, at one of the three we do this year. So we'll see how he's looking for London, but he's up and about. He's on fire and... Unbelievable. You know, it's just interesting to unpack and see how his life has changed with that kind of dedication, habit, routine, commitment, and, you know, running a business and raising a couple of young girls and, you know, keeping a wife happy while you're out running every day and buying all of the shoes under the and on, that exist on earth. Um, it's an interesting balance. Well, I always think it's interesting that it's, it all starts with a commitment and that first run. You never mm. know where it's going to take you in time if you have that consistency. Mm-hmm. Like I really, I really like that because it always ends up different to what you think if you keep going, and it's, it's a great lesson in life. That's it. Well, one percent better every day, and if you do it thirteen hundred days straight, you imagine, you know, that's 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 the real life example right there. So thirteen hundred percent. Uh, it's a massive percent, Nico. Numbers it's game here, mate. Percent. Don't skip the number. That's it. Well, you know, I wonder if you'd learn those kind of numbers if you're homeschooling. Uh, not that I want to. You know, know. Set, oh, set don't, the scene don't get woke bit. on me, Jace. Don't get woke, <laughs> Marty. We're, we're here to discuss something, and we might have our first fight ever on the numbers game because I don't know if I'm going to agree with you. But why don't you tell us what you've brought to the table for us today at the numbers game? Well, I just thought the and the topic I wanted to talk about is could homeschooling um, create the business owners and professionals of the future? And the reason I bring that up is. Um, Last year, we had Charlie obviously going to mainstream school and um, having a few issues with bullies and not being able to concentrate with so many kids in the classroom. And we just felt like the environment wasn't safe, even though we spoke to teachers and everything over the course of six months. So as a parent, you just want to do the right thing and make sure that your kid's okay and happy. And it was only going to be like a temporary thing. And fortunately, Cole's at home taking on the homeschooling and continuing on with the education but it's now we're coming to six months and i don't know if we're going to go back because he's doing so exceptionally well and i've never seen the kid happier as well and i just go and i started to and i've felt really uncomfortable like people you know you go to cricket training or you do something you know where does charlie go to school and you go oh he's homeschooling and you've, yeah, you're a bit embarrassed because usually you go, yeah, he goes up the road to this school. And, um, but it's something we're becoming more and more proud of because of some of the disciplines it's teaching. And, and from a parent's perspective, first of all, I think the thing I come back to is no one cares more than you do about your child. As much as you'd like to think kids are getting looked after out there in the community, and they're at a tender age, you know, nine, 10, 11 years of age. And then no one cares more about your child's education than you do as well as a parent. And, um, and it's interesting. We, 
we've had to become very disciplined around it. Like we've set up a learning room at home that's a really, you know, really nice place to learn. Um, you focus on two hours of direct education a day, and that's done by you get a course like we use Yuka, and you get all the fundamentals that you need. And what's really cool too is it's self-driven. So you can sit with the child and basically say, all right, here are the things we need to cover. What do you want to work on in the, in today? So you can be very self-directive with the child as to see what the child feels like on the day and then direct accordingly. And that's really interesting because wherever that focused attention is, the child's making the decision on it. And then the curiosities that lead off that seem to be much more engaging to the point where we're seeing um, Charlie now really be engaged in activities that we didn't think he would be based on what he's learning. So the other thing that we find that instead of having to be with 30 kids that we don't know much about um, and he doesn't know much about, we're engaging more with family friends and kids within family friends that are connected in its own network. So sort of like, I guess, religious groups would or, you know, let's say Jewish communities and we're only sort of dotting this together. And, um, and that's being much more effective as well. And we're also having things like choosing his pursuits, like for PE, he's focusing on cricket this summer and we're giving him wide range of activities within that, but we're going all in on where the interest is. In winter, it's going to be tennis. Um, He's setting up an ant ecosystem, like he's growing ants and working out what they need to eat and, you know, how do you create, how do you protect the queen and create environments. He set up his own business um, in regards to his coin interests and selling on eBay and learning about margins, learning about profitability. It's fascinating. It's actually fascinating to see him be so engaged and running with his learnings and taking it out at a whole new level. And I was just thinking about how us as entrepreneurs need to be so flexible and think outside the mainstream. And I just, I just go back to when I was at school and I guarantee you over the course of maybe 12, 13 years, there's two teachers that stick out, one or two teachers where you go, they actually had a significant influence uh, on me. And they were, you know, they really, impacted my learning and, and my engagement with school. And I think about, you know, even the friends you create, you pick out probably on one hand the friends that really, you know, you carried through with over the over the journey as well. And I was worried about the social aspect more so than anything. But I'm finding that if you're in the interest of the child and you're going collectively to groups and forming friendships out of the interest, it actually is holding more weight as well. And I just, yeah, and I'll go into it a bit more, but this is unexpected for me. <laughs> I didn't think I'd feel this way, but actually I'm now questioning going back into the mainstream because I'm seeing how much further he's, he's going. And, and even in regards to his algebra, he's doing year eight algebra because he can. So if you're in a collective school learning a certain level, then you're sort of bounded in by that level. If there's areas of deficiency, you could quickly scale up to where they need to be. But it's more so in regards to the acceleration process. If they're running with certain things where they're very good at, then you're very much limited to what the class, where the class is at. Whereas this frees you up to explore and accelerate the learnings into whatever level that the child is 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 at and where his interest lies. So yeah, anyway, fundamentally I'm babbling now, but what um what are your initial thoughts? It's very outside of mainstream thinking, so I'm interested, guys. Um, not sure. I'm not sure I like it, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna not challenge you on a few things, but ask you. You've, and you've obviously done this because you're intelligent and you're seeing the results. But I totally hear what you're saying in the fact that uh, the learning progresses. I can see why that would be the case. Um, mm. The questions I have, which are the same questions you had around the social aspect and um, the politics that happen in schoolyards. And I understand that for some kids, including myself, when I was a kid, the politics are not always great as a kid, mm. but I think it teaches you street smarts. Um, so that's the first thing I think about. 
And then I think about, um, and I know Charlie's not at the secondary school, but yeah, you know, I've I've had a um, I've had a lot of discussions with clients around private school versus public um, school or state based school. So, um, you know, talking about financial planning and whether or not to spend the money. And the thing that consistently comes out of um, well, the 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 pros for private school is the networks that are created post um, post school that set you up for mm. business. A lot of those people's families are in business. The young kids that come through those private schools are in business, and you know, I I know now some of the clients that we've got that work in particular industries are all you know they've all had a leg up through doing private school, and if I think back to my childhood and schooling days, I don't and and this this is an uneducated comment because I don't actually know this, but what's the biggest thing I got out of school? It wasn't it wasn't learning how to do maths. It was just learning life. Mm. Um, I don't really think I learnt good things until I actually started in business and I got into the workforce personally. Um, obviously, I knew how to do algebra and long division at one stage, but ask me to do long division now and al- algebra, I wouldn't have a clue. Um, so for me, I think school is just as much about learning politics and how to deal with politics, not official politics, but the politics of life. Um, than so much being educated and being able to read and, and whatnot, which is obviously highly important. But so that's, that's you know, if I was, was going to challenge you, that's probably what I would say. Um, you know, do you I, think, I, out of interest, Nick, do you think if you were, like you think about how self-directed you are now in business mm. and with street smarts as well, do you think that would have been an advantage to you in having that, having more autonomy in your learning growing up as to choosing what you wanted to learn out of your interests. Um, I get the social aspect. I, I do agree mm. with that. And we're meeting up with, you know, obviously sporting groups and there's actually homeschooling groups now because the, the numbers are actually quite staggering. Like there's a 19% increase in homeschooling in Vic and um, in New South Wales, but that's off a, off a smaller base, right? In Queensland, it's forty six percent, and they thought out of COVID that would reduce, but it's actually trending upwards. But my my question is, do you think at any level self directed learning in your interests when you were younger would have provided you to be able to do more of what you're doing now? You know, because at an earlier age, um, I think for me, not I'm, I'm not sure for me personally, but I can see yes how that would work. Like, and the reason I say that is, yeah, you know, I didn't really work out what I wanted to do for quite some time. Um, but I guess childhood is where you try things out, right? And you work you work out what you like and you don't like. And the reality is, I was decent with numbers, so and I've landed in the finance and financial planning space. So, do you reckon there's a reason why you didn't know what to do? given the way the school system set up to learn what you're supposed to learn in some level. I think there's different kids too as well. Like yep. so for me I was okay at school. I was pretty pretty good past everything and and got good marks, but I wasn't that interested. I wasn't that interested in it. Um I went to school for the other stuff, for sport and you know hanging around with mates really. And then obviously you do get serious, but I don't know, like this could be um you know, people might think this is a stupid comment, but what is your what does your end school mark really go towards? Like let's <laughs> let's 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 be honest. And university is the same. Like I did a university course and never went to uni. Did it all I did it all correspondence because I hated going there. I wanted to work. I just used to cram for the exams and made get all the content online, cram for the exams and pass it all. So again I just keep going back to myself and everything I've I've learnt has probably been from the early 20s onwards um, yep. in business and learning on the job. Mm. But I see what's going on in society at the moment and the reality is the school system, there's a lot of question marks over it. So, you know, I think if I had a kid, then I would definitely consider homeschooling as long as there were ways to get them connection in other ways. And I think mm, to correct. my upbringing, I had a bunch of cousins and we're all the same age. So... Not only did I get the political stuff at school, I, I got it every time, every weekend, every holidays, because you know we had so many kids at the same age. So I think if you can create those areas or those spaces for kids to get that other element, mm. 
And I definitely understand why a lot of um, parents would want to go home homeschooling. So what you're saying is that there's definitely a you know a, a family network that you can operate in. That yeah, but the political well, side of the outside of those networks are invaluable because well, of just general life learnings. I think kids. Well. I think kids. And again, I haven't got kids, so I'm coming. Um, I'm not coming from an angle of I've been a parent, so I know this. I'm just thinking about myself. I think kids need to be put in a space with a lot of other kids for a long time with no supervision to really learn how the you know the politics and and whatnot. And you know, within reason, I'm not saying you know you let kids go into an area and all fight, but they need to work it out without supervision. And I think what's happening. You know, a lot of the things you listen to now is the is the red tape, is the supervision, mm. is the teachers can't do this and teachers can't do that. So I can, and I'd probably throw this back to you, Marty. Like, is it is there a challenge for kids? You know, based on that, there is so much red tape now that they don't like we did, and this could be an old school comment, but we just had to find a way through certain things, right, and just work them out. So. I don't know. It's it's very different to when I was growing up. The school system now, um, and there's so many other things to consider around cyberbullying and you know, like mm. like bullying when we were kids was just someone would tease someone, um, and then it'd pretty much get squashed. It's so different these days. So it's hard for me to comment to that regard. But yeah, I can see how homeschooling would work as long as you could create those social those social environments where the kids could learn politics and how to react around how to act around other people and what's right and what's wrong it's it's definitely uh hitting a lot of weird feelings for me like when i'm trying to think about what what was good about primary school and high school what would i feel like i was missing out you know obviously i haven't touched on what what does the transition back into higher education look like for charlie but just just in general from a you know schooling point of view some of my most traumatic memories are being at primary school like getting picked on or bullied or whatever. And, you know, again, I go, if I didn't have that, how would I be different today? Like what, what would I, would I be lacking resilience? You know, would I have developed some, you know, in a different way? And it's not to say right or wrong. Like, as I said, there's some memories there that are, they're, they're locked, locked under, you know, lock and key in a box somewhere that I don't unpack. Cause it's like, you know, mm. and then it's like, the relationships I had with teachers, you know, is that where I learned to communicate well with adults and respect and responsibility? You know, I think of a few teachers off the top of my head, like my prep teacher, Mrs. Hall, and then one of the PE teachers, Miss Keller or Miss Tanner, she got married. I think um, she may be a listener, actually. That'd be quite funny for her to hear her name. Um, you know, and then going, how did these different people each year have little, little uh, influences on my life the whole way mm. along rather than the same person. And then I also think about the parental responsibility around the education outcome. Like, is there an added pressure to your, to homeschooling and, you know, using yourself, Marty and, and Colleen as an example here. But if you think about parents, the added pressure of homeschooling a child as well, you, I'm assuming you just got to have some really good structure and routine around this. Cause there's, I feel like there's a lot of responsibility, um, mm. you know, in, you know, what you're trying to control and, and what we're trying to do here. Yeah, it, it's it's a really good point. I mean, we've thrown up a lot of questions around it ourselves, and um, it was interesting. I went to a parent teacher night. I remember, and I said, "What's your focus in the next term in regards to Charlie's STEM development?" And I just got this blank look. And I'm going, "Well, where where are you focusing your energies with the kids? Because we'll be able to assist at home." And I kept getting this stare, blank stare, and I'm going, "Have I?" done something unreasonable here because I'm, I'm literally interested in knowing. And I thought, and I've had, I've had good teachers. Charlie's had good teachers too. But I go, oh, wow, this is like, is this something we could do better? And what does the future look like as well? The other thing I was thinking about, because I'm worried about all this, you know, digital space and being on too much digital and stuff like that, which is a concern as well. But like we've discussed in other episodes the kids are now talking to each other digitally as well a lot of the time even in schooling um, even when they're at school they're on their ipads and various things but i'm going what does future business look like and future professions look like is it going to be more technical are companies going to be run by you know are they going to be billion dollar companies with five or six people running them 
instead of 500 people because of what AI is going to be. You, so you, are, you start asking bigger questions as well. And I think for me, the resilience is an interesting one. The, like you said, um, mm. Jace, you make a good point. The question I was asking myself is, instead of having to deal with bullies and people that really aren't good to be in the same environment with, if they're that way inclined, um, how can we foster resilience in new ways? Can it be through sport? Mm. You know, can it be through business? Like Charlie had a, a bad review come back in regards to one of his business dealings and we had to discuss it and talk about it and what we're going to do to rectify it um, at cricket, you know, he missed the pitch a couple of times in his cricket match and, you know, started to get a little bit, you know, emotional about it. And we said, all right, how do we front up next ball? That ball's over. You know, how do we get back to it? How do we show our character in this moment? Yeah. Um, so there's lots of interesting other ways that, that – because I was the same as Nick on this in so because I thought if there's a fight in the schoolyard, I've got to deal with it. You know, mm. I've got to find a way through. I've got to handle it. But do we need to be that sort of society anymore? That wasn't great, having to deal with that. Yeah. It did give you a lot of street smarts. Yeah, but I'm going, maybe it's a brave new world. I don't yeah. know. And just, just, just to be clear, like I, I wasn't suggesting that things like bullying or fighting should happen or are okay. No. Um, I definitely should not happen. But I guess I was more referring to just the way kids act. And, you know, like I'm just dealing with girls, you know, and – you know, as a as a, as a male, you you would remember just the the strange moments you had with girls. You know, trying to get courage <laughs> up to go and talk to a girl, like just little things like that. I'm thinking about, and you know, I oh, you know I didn't get I got picked um, second last for the team, and oh, how come that guy's better than me? Like all these little things that I think that you're exposed to. Did you did you have your first kiss in primary school? Ooh. No, no, it was high school. It was year uh, seven. It was an early bloomer. Yeah. Grade six. Yeah. High school for me. Grade but, six, Jace. Yeah, mate. <laughs> so do, do you know do you know what I mean? Like that's 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 the only thing I'm thinking about is, you know, as long as you can recreate that somewhere, um, because it's yeah, it's not about resilience to tell a bully to to, to piss off and fight back, but it's resilience in just the way that people act and, under, yeah. you know, just normal life that we, that we actually deal with similar stuff now in business, you know. And, that's, that, and that's probably my greatest concern. Like yeah. that's, you know, out of everything, it's being able to adapt to real life situations. So we have to create those environments where mm. that can still happen um, to be conducive to that development as well. And that's something that's probably our biggest pain point in if we were not to go back in the interim, that we have to create environments that that can happen. And that mm. can happen in sports. But like you said, even going camping, mm. right, because there's, there's trips. So going camping with other families mm. and being able to light fires and, you know, just do cool stuff together in groups as well, um, really, really important. But sometimes, yeah, you've got to expect the unexpected in life too and know how to deal with that. And that's – that's probably the challenging area as well. Mm. But in regards to customized learning, um, you know, I think professionals have to think outside the box and explore diverse interests in order to innovate, create solutions and execute. Wrote down a few things. Um, the flexibility and autonomy, the, the, the discipline to self-pace your learning and actually have focused learning and then spend you know, the rest of the day in other pursuits. It could be activities, going to science work. All that I think that's pretty cool. Plus, you can go on holidays whenever mm. you want instead yeah. of having to go to school, just school holidays. So there is some flexibility. It is a real discipline for the parent as well. Like Colleen's mm. time is spent really, and and Jay said it well. She questions, "Am I doing enough?" But from what I've seen in regards to his development over this time compared to what it was the previous six months, it's probably three times the benefit. It's just the parent will always question. Yeah, are we doing the right thing by doing year eight algebra? But hey, he's he's doing it and he wants to do it, so we go with the hand. Um, mm. Real learn a uh, real real world learning, um, just yeah, community service stuff, um, just just real life stuff. Cooking, learning how to cook mm. ingredients. Mm. Like we allow him to now cook for us, cook us a meal. 
So very strategic by me. I think that's that's great. <laughs> so, but um, but even looking after the dog at another level as well, which is what kids would be doing anyway. But mm. you're trying to integrate real life stuff mm. I- into the learning as well, and just critical thinking. I think you know it, that sense of independence. I I'm revisiting my own school years and thinking how much I was capped by the classes I was in, mm. and and just not being able to be autonomous in my thinking. And I think about the What Works business program I did at 16 and how that changed the game, like setting up a stand-up comedy night at the pub and doing the marketing and learning about, you know, I did that off my own independent thinking. And I think that was the chess, another one, Monopoly, games with people that inspired, you know, opportunities to think freely. I think they were the things that, that worked well. But like you said, Nick, as well, Probably five of my best friends have come out of school as well mm-hmm. that have stayed the journey as well. Yeah. So I think there's pros and cons, but I just want to bring it up because, mm. again, it's just testing the thinking of the mainstream and going, yeah. there's not one right or wrong here, but I go, I was thinking I was wrong, mm-hmm. right? By doing what I did, I felt bad about it. And I'm going, I don't feel so bad anymore. Mm. given what we've experienced ourselves. So, yeah, uh, just food for thought. You've stood up to a few challenges from Nick and I too, mate. So I think uh, there's definitely something in it that's worth exploring. And I've got one. Just got one last question. Do you think there will come a time, you know, Charlie's obviously playing cricket and whatnot. Do you think there will come a time where he will say, hey, I want to go to school? Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah. Because it's, again, it'll be that moment where there's, there's something in it for him beyond what we're thinking now, mm. right? So I think there's there's that element that we've got to keep open-minded each way mm. and go, all right, this yeah. this is the time. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing. I wouldn't cap it one way or the other. I, yeah. I just, yeah, we'll go with it with what's working well. And, if that, and the other thing, and this is if I don't think there'd be many homeschoolers listening, but if there are, the thing is to be proud that you're doing it. Because as soon as someone says, which school do you go to, you sort of you go, oh, yeah, homeschool. And it's like, and that's not good for the kid either, right, if you do that. So we say the school of vids, you know, mm. and it's uh, the gold standard in schooling in our family. <laughs> and it's like be proud of it because the, the kid will draw off that confidence as well. So whatever you're doing, you want to be doing it well. So he learns German in the morning, does piano lessons. It's, um, it's quite invigorating to watch. And I go, Geez, if I have my time again to have those pursuits to follow my curiosities, um, I think it would have been cool. But again, pros and cons, pros and cons. So I hope you enjoyed that. Something Good. different. Yeah, awesome. Uh, thank you, Marty. Beautiful, mate. Well shared. And uh, look, definitely interested in our listeners' take on this. Um, are you homeschooling someone at the moment? Uh, do you let them listen to the Numbers Game podcast and find that it is great educational content for your children? Um, I do think we've cut back on the swearing lately, which has been great. Um, so someone told me I had a bit of a potty mouth on the show, so apologies if that uh, came Filthy. about. in Filthy in the earlier seasons. Uh, Apologies for that. Uh, After 160 or so episodes, we've got this uh, nailed now and we're quite polite, lovely gents here just sharing some value for everyone out there. Love to know what you think. Send us an email, hello at the numbersgamepodcast.com.au. Marty's also sharing some great videos. So if you haven't followed us on Instagram, Marty's giving us some uh, episode recaps before they come out each week. So stay tuned on Instagram for those ones. Um, Give us a like, give us a follow. Thank you again for tuning in and until next time keep learning game over